Of course, success in IGCC English is about nailing exam technique as much as how good you are at English. But it's hard to nail exam technique when CIE keep changing the format of their papers. At the time of recording, there were very few past papers out there. This is where Schofield on Shakespeare comes in. Once again, I've plundered the archives of CIE to find three texts used in the older 0500 specification. I've taken text A from the core paper of the summer 2008 exam and text B and C from the extended paper. I've edited a few questions from the core paper and written some of my own to recreate questions 1A to E, which also required some tweaks to the original passage. Question 1F is essentially the first part of the old question 3. I've written question 2A to C myself and both question 2D and question 3 are almost identical to the old question 2 and question 1, although there have been some changes to the weighting of the mark scheme for question 1, which I have implemented. It doesn't really matter whether you follow that or not, but the crucial point is this. This is as close as you're going to get to a genuine past paper for the new 0500-0990 specification. So get stuck in and stay tuned. This is Schofield on Shakespeare. How should you approach this video past paper? Well, the first thing to bear in mind is that it would be easier to work from an exam style paper copy with both question and insert available. Please email me at schofieldonshakespeare at gmail.com if you would like to have this. However, this isn't essential as all inserts and questions will be shown on screen and you will be able to toggle between them. The second point to consider is timing. Paper 1 is time pressured and it's all very well nailing the technique for different sections if ultimately you don't get onto the final bullet points for question 3. I will only go through the mark scheme and my answers to each section after sharing all questions and inserts with you. And so my suggestion is that you should aim to complete the whole paper in approximately two hours of a single sitting. Therefore you should ensure that your exam technique is sound before attempting any of these questions or indeed continuing to watch this video. My individual videos on different parts of the paper can help you with this. So with this video, texts and questions will automatically appear at five second intervals. Press pause to read each section through before writing down your own answers. You will need to toggle back to the extracts to answer the questions properly, of course, but this will be easy to do knowing that each slide is shown for five seconds. Generally, the passages will be divided up into three slides so that the font isn't too small to read. Enough from me, just to reiterate that every slide will advance every five seconds until the end when I will present the mark scheme, my own response, my analysis of how my responses meet the mark scheme. Press pause to start reading passage A and to start the practice paper. The second part of the text will be shown in five seconds time and so on.
how did you get on? Now, here's the really important part, reflecting on what you did well and where you can improve. It's time to see my answers and the mark scheme. This question 1A is possibly more difficult than the one you will get in the exam. Nonetheless, this may be no bad thing. Remember, you need both points to get the mark. There are no half marks in this exam. Press pause to mark your work. Now for the 1B synonym questions, one of a number of questions in which you can get easy marks for precise understanding of vocabulary. If you are conscious that your vocabulary may not be as broad as you would like it to be, check out my three videos entitled Boosting Vocabulary to Grade 9 Level, IGCSE English Language 0500 0990. For the first question, I feel you need to show an understanding of utmost being a superlative. It isn't sufficient to say that there is a good or great deal of. It needs to be the greatest amount of or the maximum. For the second question, a reminder about the importance of reading the words within their context. Roughly could mean using violence in a different context. Time to mark your work then. Don't be too generous. If your answer is a little general or woolly, do not give yourself the mark. Press pause. Need more practice on any question 1Bs? Well, in that case, you can go to Schofield on Shakespeare. There's the playlist there for this particular exam. If you scroll down here, all of these boosting vocabulary videos have extra work on 1B, 2B and 2D. So you can see here, I'd recommend watching the full video. Um, however, if you just want to work on 1B, you can see here there's a hyperlink here to the 1B question. For this question, I do think you need to say that the writer's head doesn't hurt, rather than a more general answer about no pain. I think you also need to make sure that you answer the question for the second bullet points and don't just say that he is relieved he isn't alone. Why is this? Because, of course, people will be able to come to his aid. Press pause to consider and mark. Fairly straightforward, this one. Although you do need to be careful that your first reason is sufficiently comprehensive. Pause to mark. Now 1A was probably a little too hard and this one is probably too easy, for which I do apologise. Nonetheless, did you get the full three marks here? Press pause. Plenty of potential points for this one, with a key idea being that you need to be careful to use your own words as much as humanly possible. Make sure that you have fully explained each point and that you have three clearly different points. Remember the principle, three marks equals three clearly separate points. Press pause to mark. Let's move on to the summary question 1F now. Key principles for this question include not wasting any words and writing concisely. You also need to make sure that you don't include any unnecessary small details. By doing so, you sure as hell ain't summarising. Have a read through these points. I normally ask my pupils to cross-reference the points they have used in their response with those shown here. Of course, marks are not awarded on a per point basis, but it is nonetheless a useful exercise. So count and compare the number of points in your response with those on screen. Press pause now.
However, what is more important is the marking grid in which the examiner has to make a judgment about the overall effectiveness of your summary. There are most marks awarded for your reading. The best responses will clearly show to the examiner that you have thoroughly understood what the passage is about. The best responses will include a wide range of points. I'm always asked, how many? This is a tricky one, but I would suspect you need around eight or nine summarised concisely to get into that top band. Press pause if you'd like to read through the mark scheme in more detail. In particular, note the descending adjectives. Top band has thorough understanding, seven to eight marks competent understanding, five to six reasonable, three to four some understanding, and one to two limited understanding. Five marks are also allocated for the quality of your writing. Note the writing bar is lower for this question compared to say paper two. In paper two for directed writing, the top band wants you to have a wide range of sophisticated vocabulary precisely used and spelling, punctuation and grammar almost always accurate. Not so here. Here we are after clarity, concision. And in terms of spelling, punctuation and grammar, it is mostly accurate rather than almost always accurate. So that mightily irritating missing apostrophe may not prevent you from getting the full five marks here after all. Read through and possibly even memorize the writing mark scheme for 1F. Press pause to do this. Before you make a judgment and allocate yourself marks out of 10 and five for your response, here is what I wrote. It is very difficult to stay warm when sleeping in the woods and it also means that the writer finds it difficult to acclimatise to warmer temperatures. Occasionally, he feels ill. He has a very long journey to get to his office and he repeatedly has to bring all his belongings with him. At the beginning of his journey, he needs to run to catch the bus, which makes him feel uncomfortable due to his numerous layers of clothing. The writer needs to eat a great deal in order to be able to stay warm enough at night. However, he has occasionally fallen ill due to either inadequately cooking meat in the woods or failing to ensure safe drinking water. Without conventional washing or storage facilities, he struggles to ensure he looks appropriately smart for work. There can be strange, unpredictable noises in the woods which can unsettle, while sounds from nighttime animals can keep him awake at night. I suggested that you might cross reference a number of points included in your response with the points in the indicative content. I'm going to do the same, and no, I didn't look at the indicative points beforehand to help me write my response. So I reckon that I've included eight from a possible 14. Is this enough to go into the top band for reading? Well, it's important to recognise that the original CIE question was slightly different. Not only did it ask for summaries of aspects of both passage B and passage C, but it also specifically stated that marks should be allocated on a per point basis, which is not the case here. It's also worth noting that more recent summary questions have had fewer points available within the indicative content section of the mark scheme. In June 2020, for instance, there were 12 points listed. As a general guide, I think you should be aiming for eight or nine points summarised from the passage, so I feel that I'm OK here. That said, it's interesting looking at the points which are I included which weren't on the mark scheme. For instance, I wrote that he repeatedly has to bring all his belongings with him between the woods and the office. Surely that must get irritating, make his lifestyle difficult. You can see that I've taken that from the text. I take everything with me in my rucksack. 
I have read between the lines and suggested that this must be something burdensome for him, although this is not stated explicitly in the text. Note also how I have listed two separate points within the paragraph on screen, but this only equates to one point within the indicative content of the mark scheme. I don't think this particularly matters, but it's always worth scrutinising mark schemes and trying to predict CIE quirks or ways of thinking. What's more important than chalking off individual points is meeting the criteria within the top band of both the reading and the writing mark schemes. Remember, your response needs to be concise, clear and predominantly in your own words. I have used three short paragraphs, much easier to read and mark than one bumper single paragraph. And note the sharp focus on the question rather than simply retelling the passage. Note also the sophisticated understanding of the passage implied by completely rephrasing points from the text rather than unnecessarily copying words. My phrase, difficult to acclimatise to warmer temperatures, succinctly summarised the section in the passage in which he points out that he's much more sensitive to temperature now. Time now for you to make a judgement call about your own response. Press pause to give yourself a mark out of 10 for reading. and a mark out of five for writing. And just a reminder, if you haven't yet watched the 1F video, I'd very much recommend doing this. It's within the Schofield on Shakespeare playlist for CIE, IGCC English Language 0990-0500. And you can see here that there is 37 minutes talking you through 1F giving you lots of practice. Question 2A now, which kicks off with what I call the reverse synonym questions. They're found a synonym for you. You have to find the original from the text. The key point here is not writing too much. Only include the equivalent to the underlying phrase from the text. If you write more than this, I suspect the examiner will happily refrain from giving you the mark. Don't be fooled by the examiner giving you a longer underlying phrase. It might be, as is the case here with 2A2, that you still only need to write a single word. Mark 2A1 and 2 now, press pause. Here are the answers for 2A3 and 4. Press pause to mark. Now time for 2B, in which you need to show a precise understanding of three words within a short extract. You need to use your judgment here, as of course there are other possible answers. However, the key principle is that you show a precise understanding of the words, not a vague one. For instance, clings really needs to have the adverb tightly or a phrase with the equivalent meaning to show a precise understanding. Press pause to mark your work. A total of three marks available here. To see now, the key here is to choose a sufficiently interesting quotation so that you can write three sentences about it. Three marks, three sentences. Note the general guidance in the mark scheme. To get the full three marks, your explanation needs to be comprehensive. Here are some suggested quotations and notes. Have you used one of these quotations? If not, does your quotation still enable you to provide a comprehensive explanation of how the writer presents due due as resourceful and self-sufficient. Press pause now to make a judgment call on your piece with up to three marks available.
Now, question 2D. One of the fundamental errors one or two pupils might make here is referring to the wrong paragraph or paragraphs. I always recall a very bright past pupil who did this in his actual IGCSE, as we found out when we requested his exam paper. The examiner duly gave him zero for his response, as none of his quotations came from the correct paragraphs. Don't fall into that trap. Let's start with the suggested quotations and points for paragraph one. Do you use three of these quotations? Are your quotations as interesting as these? Press pause to read through and ponder, although I have to say I'm not wild about the first sentence of analysis given about Vermilion. Now for the possible points for paragraph 6. Far fewer available here, and in all likelihood your exploration of quotations from the first paragraph may be slightly longer, with the exception of comments about weathered into a map of wrinkles. In the real exam, I would suspect that the paragraph chosen wouldn't be quite as short as this one. In the original exam from which I took this question, the number of quotations required wasn't specified in the question, although the mark scheme did state that candidates could score four marks for worthwhile comment on three words from each part of the question, which is the same as now, although now, of course, rather than words, it will be phrases. So press pause to read these through, ponder and mark. Just a reminder that reproducing these notes within full sentences will not be sufficient to get the full 15 marks. Indeed, some of these notes are very, very brief, and clearly grade 9 candidates will be saying more and developing more. Remember, just as for question 1F, question 2D is marked based on a grid. This grid. Keywords within the top band include judiciously selected language. You have deliberately picked out the more interesting complex quotations. You have honed in on any similes, metaphors or examples of personification. Add meanings and associations. You have defined more complex words where necessary and explored their effect within the context. Tackles imagery with some precision and imagination. You are really precise when exploring those similes and metaphors and have something imaginative to say very occasionally, which doesn't sound far fetched or over analytical. Notice the overall sense for each reading level. The best have wide ranging discussions. Then we go down within level four for explanations, then satisfactory attempts, then communicate less well, and finally the ignominy, rarely relevant. Before you make a judgment call on your piece, here's what I wrote on the first paragraph. Notice how I begin with the quotation before writing dash and then writing my analysis. This saves time and makes it easier for the examiner to mark. Remember, they also have quotation dash notes within the indicative content of the mark scheme, as you've just seen. I write bowl shaped valley. This phrase suggests that the valley appears deep and circular to the writer from above. It suggests a kind of pleasing evenness and symmetry to the shape, something also suggested by the use of fringed in the subsequent sentence. Fringed in rich green grasses and reeds. The past participle fringed suggests that one end of the valley is neatly bordered by luxuriant, vibrant natural growth. Meanwhile, the adjectives rich and green point to the healthiness and abundance of the growth. This is clearly a place in which nature thrives. Finally, the noun reads indicates that there is water in the area, as confirmed later in the same sentence with the reference to the small lake saturated with salt-loving bacteria. The past participle, saturated, 
suggest that the small lake is completely full of bacteria, so much so that it would not be able to absorb any more. The use of sibilants, the repeated S sounds, gives a calming feel to the phrase, whilst the hyphenated positive adjective salt loving contrasts with the usual negative connotations of bacteria, which is typically associated with disease. Of course, the effect of the saturation is to produce a beautiful, unusual colour in the water, a rich red vermilion. Time for my quotations from paragraph six. Dark eyes, sharp and quick. This phrase suggests that Dieu Dieu is particularly alert and can rapidly respond to different situations. As someone who lives on her own within a remote area, this ability to swiftly assess is likely to have contributed to her longevity. Broad planes of cheekbones. This metaphor emphasises that her cheekbones are particularly but naturally expansive. The noun plane is typically used to describe a flat surface. And so the impression is that her face is perfectly symmetrical and aligned below her eyes. Weathered into a map of wrinkles. This phrase suggests that Dieu Dieu has spent a great deal of time outdoors during her life. The verb weathered relates to the effects of over time of the sun, rain and wind. You can tell by looking at Dieu Dieu's face that she has lived predominantly in the open air. Meanwhile, the metaphor map of wrinkles suggests that her skin on her face has a large quantity of small, medium and large wrinkles going in all kinds of different directions, like roads on a map. Comparison between my response and the equivalent notes in the mark scheme is worth doing. Notice how in my response I combine fringed and rich to give insight into the phrase as a whole, whereas in the indicative content they are listed separately. Does this particularly matter? I don't think so, no, and personally I find it harder to give detailed developed insight into just one single word. The Mark Scheme occasionally wants some imaginative analysis of language, and perhaps the examiner does this by choosing to mention the associations fringed has with hair. However, I clearly talk about the neatness of the vegetation, and perhaps expand upon the idea of well-being by suggesting that this is a place in which nature thrives. By doing this, I'm meeting the criteria in the top band of the mark scheme. Note that the mark scheme mentions imagery within its own bullet points, and so perhaps you should aim to write slightly more when exploring similes and metaphors. Here you can see that I'm very specific about the effect of the metaphor map of wrinkles. Roads, with the exception maybe of those in New York, are built up over time and can potentially go in any direction to get to a particular place. Thus, there is no particular symmetry or order to Dieu Dieu's wrinkles. Time now for you to make a judgment call about the quality of your own response. Reread the mark scheme and give yourself a mark out of 15. Just a reminder that there's a wealth of practice and model answers material available for question 2D. You can see here, this is within the Schofield on Shakespeare playlist, CIE IGCC English Language 09905000. There's a specific 2D video. You can also go towards the end of the question 282D video. Or if you look between the boosting vocabulary videos um, and there is work on 1B, um, 2B and also 2D here as well. Now, of course, question three is the last question of, of a time pressured exam. Nonetheless, planning is incredibly important. Make sure you've got your three highlighter pens. Make sure you put within a key here the fact that you're going to highlight any bits relating to her lifestyle in blue what you admire most in pink and in yellow, how you're going to consider your own lifestyle and values. So what I would do is I'd go through this, 
try and highlight as much as possible because I've got to make sure that what I write stems from the text so that when I take these points, I can develop them and show that I've really thoroughly understood and evaluated the text. This is how I like to see it. Transform, don't translate. Develop, don't just state. Nail the tone, but don't overcomplicate. So here's what I wrote before seeing the indicative content of the mark scheme. Interviewer, could you start by telling the viewers a little about Dujou's lifestyle? Donovan Webster. Yes, of course. I think the first thing I noticed was just how self-sufficient she was. Without electricity, she was still able to make us a cup of tea in minutes by using solar power. She was also largely self-sufficient in terms of her food and drink. As well as breeding sheep, she grew her own root vegetables, which is just as well, as I suspect her nearest supermarket would have been over 100 miles away. Her lifestyle clearly involves her spending a great deal of time outside, as you can tell just by looking at her darker, weather-worn skin. She seems remarkably strong and supple for a woman of her age, and she needs, to, she needs to be in order to be able to walk the vast distances to manage her sheep and cattle, and to be able to build pens for them. Interviewer. What did you admire most about Dew Dew? Donovan Webster. I admired her independence and pride. Comparatively speaking, she is very little, yet she insisted on making us a herbal tea and cooking us a delicious, healthy meal. We were complete strangers, and yet she treated us like honoured guests. I also admired her intimate relationship with nature. Can you believe that she had a bird's nest inside her front room? My wife would go crazy, yet Diogio treated this as completely normal. Whereas we make our lives more complicated by whiling away hours staring at smartphone screens, Juju has a wonderful, simple, stripped-back life. She eats, looks after her animals, and is a part of nature. Interviewer, how has your meeting with her made you consider your own lifestyle and values? Donovan Webster, yes. I've had plenty of time to reflect on my own needlessly hectic lifestyle and that of my children. We are all trying to spend more time outdoors and away from computer screens, even when it's cold. If Judja can walk a half marathon every day during the winter to reach her sheep and camels, then I don't see why we can't wrap up and spend some time every weekend meandering in our local woods. Before meeting Giorgio, I used to spend hours researching the most complex recipes for meals in order to show off to friends and neighbours. No more. I realised that simple food, simply cooked, can be the most delicious. Who would have thought a rice drink could be so refreshing? In a similar way, I'm no longer agonising for quite so long about what I wear. Yes, of course I want to look nice, but I've realised that values and actions are more important than appearance. Jiu with her simple loose-fitting jacket and trousers, was as dignified and beautiful as any man or woman in a three-piece suit or cocktail dress. How is this marked? Well, 15 marks are available for reading. Here are the top three bands. Key points to note within the top band are You need to have thoroughly evaluated or transformed the text. You need to have developed ideas, not just plonked them. Though, of course, these ideas need to have stemmed from the text and they need to sound right. And you need to have transformed a wide range of points whilst ensuring that you cover all three bullet points and that your, in this case, interview sounds like an interview. Have a look again at my response, which will appear in five second intervals. How does it meet the top band of the reading mark scheme?
let's take a few points. Well, it needs to sound like a spoken interview. And so references to wives and children are to be expected if you are writing as a married family man, of course, as are comparisons with our own lives and occasional use of the conversational yes. Remember the importance of developing ideas from the text, which I do here by developing the idea of her remoteness. Her nearest supermarket must be very far away. Another development is seen in suggesting that she must be able to walk vast distances. This stems from the ideas in the first paragraph that sheep and goats are on June hillsides, whilst camels and a few horses are near the shore. The two small square blockhouses are at the far end of the lake. Overall, this must be some fit lady to be able to get between all of these places, presumably on a daily basis. I have incorporated plenty of points from the text. Let's see how many different points are included within the paragraph above. We have the reference to the ingenious way Dew Dew heats up water for tea. We have the fact that she stir fries potatoes and wild onions, root vegetables. We have an understanding of her remote location. I've transformed the line about her face being weathered and shown an understanding of the distances mentioned in the first paragraph. I've also referenced the camel dung bricks within this final phrase. But of course, there are another 10 marks up for grabs in this question for the quality of your writing. Here are the top four bands. Within the top bands, you need to nail the tone you could be asked for this question to produce a letter, a report, a journal, a speech, an interview or an article. Your writing needs to sound authentic. And so the more you independently read letters, reports, journals, speeches, interviews or articles, the more successful you are likely to be. Similar to the previous point, your language needs to sound convincing and consistently appropriate. Your ideas need to be expressed in an effective and interesting way. And you need to sequence your ideas logically. Use almost invariably short paragraphs and make sure your accuracy is virtually flawless. Have another look at my response. How does it meet the top band of the writing mark scheme? My response will appear now in five second intervals to help you do this. However, remember that the examiner also has some suggested ideas to reference for each bullet point. Here's what they suggest for the three bullet points. I suspect these notes are slightly briefer than they will be in your exam. My model response is probably more useful. Press pause to read these through and digest. Hopefully you should now be in a position to give yourself a mark out of 15 for reading and 10 for writing. Press pause to consider your reading mark. The writing mark scheme will appear in five seconds time. This has been a Schofield on Shakespeare past paper exclusively on the 0500 0990 paper one for CIE. I hope it's been useful. Best of luck and many thanks for watching.